Uh, the news that the uh, Mystery Bank has just pawned the family jewels gave traders a jolt. Nervous about the sudden transfer of almost 20% of the world's annual gold production and the possibility of a sell-off. So they're trying to put out this rumor that there's about to be a popping of the gold bubble. Uh, how can that happen in gold and silver when at inflation numbers for 1980 it should be $2,500 an ounce or more? So they could do this short term, but not long term, because they're devaluing currencies worldwide and... Dollars and yen and yon and euros are being devalued. And so gold is denominated in those currencies, and so it's going to go up. Gold's not really going up. The currencies are losing value. So uh, that's how they uh, spin this. In a tiny footnote at its annual report, the bank disclosed its unusually large holding of gold compared with nothing the year before. The disclosure was a large factor in the correction of gold price this week. Well, this is the, the bank hoarding gold. And buying it out from another group. So that should actually send gold up. Boy, I tell you, they can really make lemons out of lemonade, can't they? And the average dumbed-down person reads that and buys it. Uh, Republicans sound warning over expiration of Bush tax cuts. With the economy still sputtering, Republicans are drawing renewed attention to the looming expiration of Bush-era tax cuts and warn that the roadblock will clobber everyone from small business owners to middle-class families. With the economy still sputtering, Republicans are drawing renewed attention to the looming expiration of Bush-era tax cuts and warning that the roadblock will clobber everyone from small business owners to middle-class families. And uh, the tax is just huge in the trillions and trillions of dollars and is all on almost every tax bracket. Obama lied about how it would be implemented. They now admit people making even less than $50,000 a year uh, will be uh, hit by the tax. And, of course, business owners will have to cut jobs and lay people off uh, because of this, but you have to understand, my friends, that, and I, I talk about this all the time, but Kennedy in one tax bracket cut it by 35%, and another by 40%, and another by 50 and some of the lowest brackets he cut it by 50 And tax receipts more than doubled in one year after his 1961 tax cut. I mean, Kennedy was a patriot. He wasn't perfect, but he, he went and his advisors and pointed out, well, sir, when we cut taxes... Uh, the economy surges, and he said, well, cut them. Cut them as much as you can. I mean, especially if the government gets more money. The government doesn't want more tax receipts. They want to bankrupt the economy. They want to drive you out of your cars into buses. They want to bankrupt you off the road. They want to bankrupt you so you can't send your children to private school. They want to bankrupt you and shut down all energy supplies in the United States. This is an act of war, the carbon tax, now being implemented, even though they can't get the Senate to pass it, through the EPA and others. They want you to go bankrupt. California knew in the last two years when they raised all those taxes. California knew full well that when they did that, the economy would go from sputtering to full cardiac arrest. A total stall out. The engine blew. Schwarzenegger's up there stealing and grabbing and insider trading, and uh, you know, he worked with Enron on scamming people. I mean, he was just in there. But when he got in, he was worth something like $800 million, and now he's supposedly worth like $2 billion. I mean, he's in there as governor just, just raping everyone, laughing at everyone. He, there's all these quotes about he loves to abuse and con people and manipulate them. California's raised all these taxes. Michigan's raising taxes. Uh, you've got New York raising taxes. In fact, they passed 80-plus taxes in the last couple of years. I saw that headline in the Wall Street Journal, and it was 84, 86 taxes. And it's just imploding. The middle class is moving out. The third world populations are moving in. They immediately are given welfare because the system is in an economic takeover. They want it bankrupt. After things are bankrupt, they're going to cut all the services to the poor people. They're going to slash those, except for Planned Parenthood and sterilization and things. Uh, they're going to slash that after they've got all the third world people here, after they can be then used as a political weapon to say, you want half of what you used to get? Vote to rob that tiny middle class that's left. Then they'll vote to rob them, vote to take their guns, and then the globals will say, now you get even less. It's, it's just so diabolical. I'll get more into the economy later. Uh, we're going to come back, take calls uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. Then I'm going to get into a ton of news. But first, I want to get into CNN saying people being murdered is good. I'm not kidding. You can't make this stuff up. There are two stories up on PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com, both by Kurt Nemo and Paul Watson, that are essential 
We're asking you to get these and email them out to everyone. Post them on your Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, you name it. CNN Sanchez, dead Americans, good for war against manufactured terror. That's Kurt Nemo's headline. Here is the CNN uh, headline that Watson's got posted. CNN host calls deadly terror bombings helpful to New World Order agenda. And the reason these articles are so important, we had the top generals in a meeting with Rumsfeld four years ago saying 9-11 sure helped us, sir. We sure need another one. And they come one millimeter from saying they staged the attacks in these incredible recordings that got released by Foyer. And then, of course, we have all these other headlines uh, from uh, newspapers saying 9-11 helped America. We need another 9-11. Remember those incredible headlines and different editorialists had to apologize and retract. Will... This host, talking about the Uganda attacks that killed more than 70 people in four separate bombings, will he apologize? He was talking to a CIA officer, and he said, well, you've got to admit, you know, this helps show how evil the Muslims are. And you know, my issue is there are some Muslim terror attacks, there are some Muslim terrorists, but most of it is either purely staged or intelligence agencies finance other terror groups to carry out attacks. I mean, Israel admits they founded Hamas. That's Haaretz and Jerusalem Post as a counterbalance to the PLO. Uh, remember we told you two years ago the Mumbai attacks were a government op run by the CIA? And because the head of Indian intelligence said that, then they assassinated him. And then it turned out that a, quote, U.S. government agent with the CIA commanded the attacks. That was the Chicago Tribune. That just came out, what, two months ago? I mean, these articles detail this whole history. And I have to tell you, this is very suspicious what happened in Uganda. And they're trying to move AFRICON in there and have the U.S. military occupy it. They have SOUTHCOM, NORTHCOM, CENTCOM. Now they want AFRICON, AFRICOR. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this incredible clip where he first pulls on your heartstrings talking about an aid worker who was killed. And then he segues uh, into, well, this is a good thing, uh, talking to the CIA officer. This is outrageous. They were watching on an outdoor Here it screen. Is. Our latest tally of the number who died, 74. 74 innocent people are dead. Join, uh, joining me now is Gary Bernstein. He's a former CIA officer. But you know what's interesting about this? In a strange way, the event is helpful to the cause of those of us who know uh, how sadistic these fundamental radical Islamic terrorists are. And if it helps get the message out there that these are not the good guys, then so be it. Then so be it. Now, this is a big, big issue. And you can go read all these other reporters and analysts and Pentagon people saying, oh, we sure need another 9-11 to teach the lazy, bad American people that we need to attack Iran, that we need to go into other countries. And then, of course, it came out not just in Mumbai that it was a government operation run by the West, but remember it came out in mainstream news that the Bali operation was an inside job. I mean, they do this over and over again. This is just a fact. This is just a fact. Just like the USS Liberty was staged to be blamed on uh, Egypt. Even a BBC documentary found that. It was called Operation Cyanide. We'll be right back. Well, if you just joined us, CNN host calls deadly terror bombings helpful to New World Order agenda. That's PrisonPlanet.com. We're going to play that again later in the hour. CNN Sanchez says dead Americans good for war against manufactured terror, that it's helpful, and that so be it if it helps understand how e evil the Muslims are. Uh, key article I'll be detailing more coming up. Also want to get into FDA panel to review safety of diabetes drug, Avandia. Uh, another big European report that aspartame is causing miscarriages and low birth weights and a bunch of other genetic engineering poisoning, uh, eugenics news. That is all coming up. Uh, but I want to go to your phone calls uh, as well here today. After I take uh, calls here in the next 20 minutes, I'm also going to get into suffer these criminals in Oakland. Don't call the cops. Dozens of layoffs effective at midnight. Barring last-minute deal, the police are saying they're not going to respond to petty crime. That's actually been going on for a long time. Now it's just official. And I wanted to dovetail that with Cleveland, Ohio, a suburb. Uh, and uh, it talks about uh, counties there saying, buy guns, we can't protect you. At least they're being honest. So that's uh, coming up as well. Also the latest on the oil spill. 
Uh, but right now, uh, let's go to James in Ohio, listening on 900 AM WCER. Uh, good to have you on the air with us, James. Go ahead, James. James, are you there? Okay, we'll put them on hold and go back to them in a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Mark in Texas. Mark, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, well, thank you, Hugs. I was um, looking at some of your, <laughs> some of the good things you've done here, and I, I know you had Red Beckman on your program before, and um, I had several things today, and, I, and at first I was wanting to challenge you, Alex, to to get him back on there again, if possible, and. Um, in his uh, in Beckman's Born Again Republic book, pages one thirty three to one thirty six, is he talking about a, a will and testament left to us here in two thousand and ten by the signers of the Constitution? I remember one of the signers was asked, um, "What is this?" It's you know, a republic, asked, madam. If you can keep it. <laughs> 